WNST, Tassel Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. We are positively into August. We've got fake football being played now and Lamar Jackson uh, playing now. Rashad Bateman, maybe not. But from a football perspective, that's how I met this guy. But he does money kind of the way I do crab cakes. He's making sure no shell is left unturned uh, in uh, in your big picture. Leonard Raskin joins us now from Raskin Global. I'm wearing the shirt. I'm wearing two shirts. I got my State Fair shirt. I, I'm, look, we keep it like an ice box, and you're like, we're, we're, we have crab in here at this point. Are you crabbed out with me? Or are you feeling crabby? I mean, I, no, I know you love good. crab I'm, cakes, so you're watching. I this do. Thing. I do, and I'm, I'm checking in, and I'm waiting for you to have the – the perfect crab cake obviously haven't found it yet but you're, you're going to in timonium so we'll we'll give it some time and i don't work there i'm not, i'm not i get nothing for it I, i'm getting nothing out of this deal but it's as good as it gets so we'll see what happens as listen we, i know the folks the, Pappas, Pappas, the, the, the Pappas people uh, i'm in contact with them so yeah listen look I got to say this because I haven't told anybody this because people are after me on the Internet. So I'm going to tell you and then I'm going to write about it a little bit more. This thing was designed this month to not eat crab cakes near home. Right. Like this was designed to eat them elsewhere, because when I come back every Friday for the rest of my career. I, and this is my 30th anniversary, so I'm certainly going to be doing it yep. this year as part of what I'm doing. Every Friday, I'm going to pick a new place locally, locally, yeah. Hamden, Glen Burnie, Catonsville, you know, lo- locally, T- Timonium, Hunt Valley, Cockeysville, wherever you are. So, and and it's been sort of serendipity. I've said this is serendipity. That's the tour. That's been my word for the month. And it even turned up at the James Taylor concert the other night. We did not get wet. There was a double rainbow. Don Moeller wound up getting tickets from Damien O'Doherty, who gave gave me his tickets and I wound up in the 10th row and there's James Taylor and we had a wonderful night. So like Sarah, how old is is James Taylor? You know what? 100 now. No. (laughs) I I remember. Do you think he's north or or south of 75? What do you think? I mean, James Taylor in the way back machine when, when he had hair and was like the, the, the rocket dude. You just call out my name. There you go. 73, 73. God bless. He looks 61. He looks beautiful. By the way, Jackson Brown, I go to sit down and someone made some snide comment about Jackson Brown because he looks older and he's gray. He has a great beard. What are you going to do? You know what? I said to my wife as he was there singing the pretender, you know, I said to my wife, I'm like, he looks beautiful. He looks appropriate. He looks the way Jackson Brown is Jackson Brown older or younger than James Taylor. What, what do you think? I think he's probably, I think younger. he's older. I think he's older. <laughs> I would say a couple younger. Okay. What hold on. Let's find out here. Jackson Brown is ex- he's 73. They're, they're 72, see. 72. They're the same year. They're yeah, Jackson Brown's there not. They're both born in 48. Okay. So it's I was unreal. born in 68. It's unreal. And, yeah. I mean, have you been to hey, a look, concert since this thing happened I have, yet? I have not. But the fact that these guys are still out there knocking it out, I'm sure the place was packed. It was packed. I mean, it was packed. not only do people want to get out, but you, you got the the baby boomers want to see those nostalgic shows and and to get out there and see that. Look, I remember, I remember seeing uh Ted Nugent All right. with opening with uh blackfoot and molly hatchet back in the day at the cap center and and that was a show and and now you you see ted nugent out there the dude is still still rocking i mean he's not doing as much but the dude is still out there and i I heard an interview with him just you know just uh, an aside i heard an interview with him recently and he was talking about all the guys that he was contemporaries with and how he remembers them all being drunk and stoned all the time. And he never, he said he never did any of that. I've interviewed he Ted was, Nugent a couple he times. He was sober, I spent some time with Ted. And sober I, and straight up the whole time. And he remembers them just, and the people that have died that he was talking about that were his contemporaries. And so you see these guys last night, Jackson Brown, James Taylor, you see them hanging out and doing the show at this age, man. You just got to give them their props whoever's whining, what were they doing there? If they're whining, what were they there? Leonard, here's the deal. And this is true. Jackson Brown in the show, uh, not Jackson Brown, excuse me, James Taylor in the show. 
um, at one point sort of dedicated a song and said he wrote the song about John Belushi, whom he yeah. was very close with in New right. York, probably a heroin buddy. And he said that Belushi's mm. death changed his life. It changed right. the trajectory of his life and that he got sober. And, you know, famously, you know, James Taylor had, right. uh, had drug right. problems. And so um, and by the way, the Ted Nugent thing, I interviewed Ted back in the day. I still have the interview. I've never aired it. I, I, I have to clean it up a little bit. Ted was a little saucy, as you can imagine, yeah. back in the 80s. <laughs> I um, imagine but he I still completely is. remember being backstage with Ted Nugent, him hitting on the girl I was with, and she remembers it too, because I saw her yeah. recently, 4th of July, Dundalk <laughs> friend of mine. But, but, but literally, I remember how sober he was. Yep. And, every, yep. and I've been with Ted two or three times over the years in that post-show kind of environment, backstage at Hammerjacks in 1987. Ted was very sober. So, there, I mean, there, yep. there was never yep. any question about that. Leonard Raskin is here. We're going to talk some rock and roll. By the way, I've been to a couple concerts, and I, I ask you if you've been to concerts yet because I went indoor with Bruno Mars last Friday at National Harbor. There you go. Eighty-five uh, percent of people were wearing their masks indoor at Jackson Brown and James Taylor. I would say it was more maybe. 20, 25 percent of people had masks on and Meriwether. And there was great. Yeah. By the way, I looked up and I saw these giant blades spinning at Meriwether. All I remember about Meriwether in all of my youth and the first show I ever reviewed there was Jackson Brown. I put the ticket up there in June go. of 1986, 35 <laughs> years ago. Right. So Crazy. I remember every night it got above like 82 to 85. You would just boil. I remember oh, Van brutal. Halen and Jimmy brutal. Buffett shows down there where I'm just drenched in my own sweat in the pit, right? Because yep, there's yep. just never any air. Now with COVID, and I talked to Martin not a lot about this from, uh, you know, air, LLC, and, and like what air is going to be. But the circulation, I felt the breeze. They and it felt place. like it kept the mosquitoes away from us, even after the rainstorm. I, I, Leonard, I talk about Meriwether and you talk about those things that mean something in your life that mark a point in your life. When I'm finding ticket stubs from Jackson Brown in 1986 and thinking about the, the cars ticket stub and those guys are dead, yeah. right? So right. a couple of those guys, the guys, the primary guys in the band don't exist anymore. And you right. think about all these years and how fortunate we are, you know, you know what I yeah. mean? To be yeah. able to go see a show and that's why I'm sort of soaking this in. I have my mask in my pocket. I don't feel like I've been in any place. My wife and I put our mask on in a few places in National Harbor because we felt like there's no air moving here. And like we're, you know, but we're being we're vaccinated, we're responsible. Um, the, the business part of what's happening to all of this is and James Taylor alluded to this. He said, you know, I'm so fortunate. It feels incredible here. He's 73, as you pointed out. Yep, yep. And he said, I don't know if it's wise, but. I know we're here. You know, we're here yeah, we're in this moment, right. this space right now. Let's right. enjoy this. And I've had some magical nights. I mean, Springsteen needed Vax cards. I had my Vax card. Merryweather at 930 now, beginning Sunday. If you go, you're going to Mary, right, you have to right. be vaccinated to walk into the site. So we're, it's about to get a little bit more. I've been on the Eastern Shore. I've been around. I've been places where they're, they hate CNN. I've been to places where um, Coco has a mask mandate, right? So we're in this state. We're all in it together. We're trying to make it work. I have enjoyed being with people again. You know what I mean? Like it's I it's great. It's what it's people. all about, the, the socialization, man. We got it. We're social creatures. We got to be out there. We got to make it happen. And like you said, uh, Baltimore City jumps back into the into the mask mandate world on, on indoor stuff. So So our... Our Orioles and Ravens are sending out blasts saying on the concourse, in the bathroom, in the club level, masks. Uh, when you're at your seat, you don't have to wear a mask. You can wear I'm a mask if you want to wear a mask. It. You know, I'm put off by it when I shave and it itches a little bit and I was stupid. Like I went to National Harbor. Here's this is a good story for you. You know Donna Edwards is longtime Congresswoman. Yeah, sure, we sure. talked for an hour and a half over Crab Cake at the Crab Cake Cafe about how she fought the project because the in, the developers came in and, and busted eagles' nests literally to make the land not have eagles on it. And there was all this stuff. She now lives there and <laughs> But this means, you know, and, and I talked to her about it at length, politically, about all the aspects of it. But I saw a community sort of pop up and it was wonderful. But here's what happened. We sat down at 3 p.m. on Friday before Bruno Mars at 3.03. I got there three minutes late for a congresswoman, which is, you know, they're usually on the time, yeah. right? So I'm there. Three, we came down the steps. She had her mask on. She has MS. She has primary. Mm. She's she's. 
debilitating MS, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And she's got a man, she couldn't go into the restaurant. I mean, sort of like, you know, serious, there are people yeah. like that out there yeah, sure. that we need to Absolutely. protect, right? And Absolutely. she took her mask off. We had a crab cake. It was lovely. We were outside. It was a little hot, you know, the whole deal. But it really did open my eyes to why I needed a mask in my pocket when I'm hanging out with her because I've been hanging out with you and a lot of other people eating crab cakes. And I, I don't want to get anybody sick. You know what I mean? Right. I could be a carrier, right. right? Yeah, exactly. And, and it's crazy. Look, it's just a crazy time. You don't know who's sitting across from you. You don't know if they've been vaccinated, not vaccinated, if they're sick, if they're not sick. The, these breakthrough things, people are getting sick, but you know, supposedly with if you have the vaccine, you don't get too sick. You just get like a flu bug, but it's not terrible. Well, then Lamar, then there's Lamar, right? Who's right. No who, vaccination, who got, no. Who got no COVID belief. twice? Got COVID twice. You know, and and, and I'm I'm kind of you know. Why is this a, political in that way? I mean, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be. be. See, here's you here's and I don't agree I, on much politically, but look, we have love and mutual respect, it. and and we like. Hey, science. The you you send your kid to school to learn this stuff. Hopefully, right? I've I, I read some of the editorial. I've listened to some of the press, and and I, what an, one of the things that bugs me is these people that say he's got to get the shot to be a role model for his fans. And I'm thinking, if you're taking your medical advice from Lamar Jackson, you got a problem. <laughs> you know, th- this is not the guy I'm looking to to make my medical decisions. Now he he clearly has to listen to the trainers and he has to listen to his conscience and he has to listen to his God and he has to listen to his doctors and whatever he decides to do is his decision. Uh, and I don't think it's up to anybody. This is my big thing about the mandates that they're talking about. I don't think it's up to anybody to tell somebody else you got to put something in your body, uh, inject yourself with whether. It, it doesn't but if you really want matter to function in our society and you want to be out amongst other people unvaccinated, that's kind of not in the spirit of what a plague is all about and what modern yeah, science has I come it, to do with it's, polio. But it's and- to me, yeah, different, same but different. Again, we're in a different time, we're in a different space. There's the information out there is different. Uh, you know, I, I don't disagree with what you say at the same time. I think, you know, personal, th- this is. This is the body. This is this is my. Well, if Meriwether doesn't want to let you in to see Atlantis at the end of the month because you're then you just don't go. Then, then, then you're you not coming. Go. Well, and that's. Fine. I saw see, a guy I, lose I no his problem. effing mind, Leonard. I was in. I was in New York. I was at Springsteen. Uh, first night with my wife. I went twice. Quietly yep. went up because I love Bruce and and I'm back at this point where you are. Where I spent an evening with Jackson Brown and James Taylor, and there was real value in my heart and yeah, my soul yeah. about that in the middle of a crab cake tour after watching my wife survive you know like all the magic that's happened in the world there's something about wanting to be with bruce i saw a guy lose his mind about the vaccination thing on the security screaming i'm a see, now, that's lawyer stupid. i'll see that's screaming out on on 48th yeah, see, street when everything dumb. said like we're not letting you in we're not making an right. exception see, no I matter no what issue. I got no issue with them saying that as a business. I got no issue with a guy not being vaxxed. But guess what? You know, you, you can you can have your personal choices. And to me, in this world, you, you get to make personal choice in our country, especially the, the freedom and liberty over the, the one's body is sacrosanct and is the most private and personal thing you've got. If the government takes that away, I think we're all in deeper trouble. So I think it's more philosophical there than medical. But well, you sound that like an NFL mean, PR guy now saying our but, but players you know like, you that know, doesn't I mean, it, matter. That doesn't mean you don't have to live with the consequences of your decision. You get to make the decision. You get to decide whether or not to be vaxxed. But if there's a place that doesn't let you in without the vax card and you ain't got it, then you ain't going there. And you can decide. I don't care. I'm, you know, some people are out there saying if this place requires a vaccine, I'm not going to shop there. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to eat there. I'm not going to do whatever there. That's your right. Uh, And that's perfectly fine. See, I'm all about personal liberties and freedom. So the answer is, if I get vaccinated and I can go wherever I want to go, great. Uh, If I'm not vaccinated, I got to live with the consequences of not being vaccinated. And if that means I can't go to certain places, then I can't be screaming and bitching about that choice. Uh, I can make my choice, but I can't not suffer the consequences of, of my action. You know, you get to make your decision. You get to live with the bed you make. You know, in my world, financial, let's face it, there are people and what's the uh, you'll know the song, right? If you choose not to decide, 
Well, that's you a rush. I mean, that's Neil Peart. So hold on. You're right. I'm just saying. Take, take them. They're speaking of reasons, I go to concerts because I'm never going to see Rush again. Like that's literally, right. right? So, so, so here's my point. So, so in my world, people choose to save money, and some people I see people that make not what you and I would consider a lot of money save a lot of money as a percentage of their income, and I see people that make a lot of money that you and I would consider a lot of money not save much of anything of their income. And both those groups have consequences to their actions. And there, there is no right or wrong as to what you do, but there are repercussions of your decision. And if you choose not to save and not to invest prudently and not understand what you're doing with your money, uh, you can find yourself poor and your cash lost. On the other hand, if you're prudent and you save and you invest and you invest wisely, you can end up with you know, abundance in your life financially that you may not have otherwise had. So you can save or not save, you can invest or not invest. And, and those are choices we make. And as a result of that, there are repercussions and results that we end up with in, in our lives. And that's kind of how it goes. So, so with the vax, not vax, look, Lamar chooses not to get vaxxed. And uh, middle of the season, God knows, heaven forbid, he gets COVID again. Uh, and causes the team to lose a game or two or not be in the schedule, and who knows what happens. He, the Ravens, and the world he lives in have to live with those repercussions, and then what impact does that have on his future and contract and everything else? That's between him and his team and so on and so forth. You know, That's what they got to live with. So I, I don't have a problem with anybody out there doing what they do relative to their flesh and blood, but you, you got to, there's consequences to it. You got to live with them. That's what's coming on. Leonard Raskin is here. We do not take medical advice from Lamar Jackson or, or anyone <laughs> in his inner circle from what I'm uh, gathering. Uh, don't take your financial advice uh, uh, from fools either. Go to RaskinGlobal.com. Uh, you go check the website out. There's going to be some seminars in in uh, September upcoming and football season. Are, are you excited about the, I mean, give me a little football, like, uh, it's training camp, you know, groins and pulls and stuff on rookies, but it's never a good sign, right? It's, no, and, it's not good. Yeah, and, and the whole, you know, part of this, we don't kick to the 13th. It doesn't feel close enough yet. I mean, I guess when the Crab Cake Tour is over, one of the things about the Crab Cake Tour ending at the end of the month was they don't play for another two weeks. You know, it's sort yeah, of a really go. late calendar this year. Well, you know, for, for me, uh, weekend of the 14th game, the New Orleans game, I'll be uh, in Columbus, Ohio. The, the boy Dotting goes back the to school. And, uh, Dotting the on eye. On, that's exactly right. So, so for me, I'll, I'll we only have one preseason game I think this year. So you know, here in Baltimore. Yeah. So, so I'll be missing that one. Uh, already, already have the tickets sold. Um, I'm still amazed what people will pay, and and uh, you know, so so good for them. Drew or not Brees still no, he's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Drew, I don't even know who's there. Who who is there? Um, it's it's the crab guy. What's his name? Wade Wilson, uh, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Archie, or, uh, Archie, right? Archie. Hey, <laughs> hey. Speaking of Archie, I got to. I go you, through I, them all. Aaron Brooks. I can throw a million of them. At you. I I I think Peyton Manning has got the most incredible comedic timing. The, the dude, if he was not a quarterback, could have been a stand-up comedian. He is so good. Now, I don't know if he I haven't watched his the speech game. yet. Oh, uh, I don't know if he writes his stuff or if other people write for him. I don't think he would let anybody forget. write for him. I, you know what I'll I mean? I don't forget. think well, he would. I was just going to say, I'll never forget the Saturday Night Live episode he was on when he was throwing footballs at those little kids and cracking them in the head. You, you remember that, right? You know what? If I ever interviewed him, like, and I've been in his presence many times. He's, yeah, a, wonder, he's yeah. a wonderful guy. Brandon Stokely's his yeah. best friend, right? Uh, man, I sat on the field after with their kids, you know. Uh, yep, I, if yep. I ever got a, in, in a situation to interview him and have a little fun with him in a Super Bowl or whatever, I would ask him whether that was his idea or whether that was, you know, who, I don't know, and, but who it in was, the troop it came was, up with the idea. Hysterical. It was hysterical. It still is hysterical. On. It, absolutely. And from that, the ESPN commercials with Eli, when they're kicking each other like little kids and, and his speech, you know, the first few minutes of it were comedic genius. And then after that, it became you know, a little more serious about football and life and all that. But I've seen him personally. I, I've, I've had the chance to meet him again. The, the things that amaze me, you know, I'll never forget being in uh, Indy. No, Denver. It was, was it Denver? 
when yeah ray lewis's uh game in denver when when we came back and the, the mile high miracle he was there right he was in denver correct and yeah and and the story that he waited i was in the locker game, room when it happened there was me waited after chad that game, Steele, and the out, two of them yes i was hung out to talk to ray you know why i didn't leave the locker room i had nowhere to go it was three <laughs> degrees outside it was we freezing. were avoiding leaving i yeah. i know i shot a video on the field huffing and puffing and my wife and i were going to a raven's victory party over at choppers and cherry there Creek. You go. i mean dude that was one of the great it was nights so of my cold life. it was so cold my my phone froze in my pocket. It wouldn't work. Were you in Denver? And after, yeah. Hell yeah. Come on. Oh, I was dude, sitting I right didn't behind. know you were there. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sitting 50-yard line behind the Ravens bench. It was beautiful. It was it was so phenomenal. Leonard, my wife watching, and I had Watching had the man packs. run down the sideline. Oh. We had heating packs in our gloves, in our boots. Yep in the press box yeah i and hear you at, once it went to ot and then it went again yeah i went back to use the restroom and i came out and eric da costa and i were using the bathroom at the same time it was like there weren't a whole lot of media people right there it was frozen right it was freezing. and i just remember looking at him and him looking at me and thinking is this like a twilight zone? Like I'm wearing gloves in the men's room. It's it was freezing. freezing. We're playing football all night. You know, yep. it was like literally I have not sat and watched that game again. It was one of the uh, greatest football games I have, ever. Right? I have it. And right in front of my face was Jacoby Jones rushing down the field. It was so phenomenal. It was so outstanding. I was with the wife and the boy. We, we had a blast. Leonard, and, the press and, box was empty. Everyone had uh, left because the game was over. The game was over. Everybody was on the elevators. The game was over. And when that ball went in the air, I mean, Stunning. I don't know that Stunning. there's a greater moment, you know, in Ravens history for sure. It, it was it was top. It was top three. I'll give it top three. I don't what know do you give order, the other two? I'll give it top three. I, I'm, I'm saying winning that Super Bowl with the closeout that it took to win after the lights went out in new Orleans, that's gotta be up there. In the, in okay. The, top. the last Just, play. Okay. Yeah, the last game. plays of that, of that series. And, and my top three other is, uh, my boy Anquan Bolden blocking on fourth and a mile and taking the guy's heads off against San Diego. Fourth and 29. <laughs> <laughs> the, Eric Weddle game, still doesn't like that play when I bring oh, that one up. Oh my God, that was so extraordinary. That I think that's why they changed the rules about crackback blocking because of him or something. <laughs> that that play, fourth down. I was going to Cincinnati the next that night for a business trip starting the next day. I missed my flight out because I stayed at home to watch the end of that oh, game. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that that to me was such an extraordinary play. It just sits in my brain as one of those top, top plays. I mean, there's many others, but those, those three just resonate in my brain as such top, incredible, incredible plays. Well, the, the Ray Lewis stop on Sproles in the middle, I was on the field yep. when that happened at the yeah. Murph in the corner. When, when the, the fourth and 29, I was in the press box. And yeah, that was I, I remember, unreal. I mean, literally at the 50 yard line in the old Murph, watching that zigzag thing happen crazy and like i the saw band the band is on the field the well, band is on the field i saw the opening that he could make it oh, there was that man. two seconds where i had yep. a really good view of it to say he's got pasture like like he, yep. he he's got a little bit of green and he's elusive he's got to miss one and miss one other and he can make it and damn if he didn't let her ask it you're getting, you're getting my brush. blood pumping for football season right now uh rascal global's way to find it see this is why I, you know i mean it's great to have sponsors it's great to have crab cakes but it's even more important to have enthusiasm i think um let her so will protect it. your money and give you good advice with uh, the same kind of enthusiasm you can find him at raskin global um crab cake tour are you um I know you're following along. And I hope I'm showing enough enthusiasm for it. I mean, I'm picking up people. We're interviewing folks. We're going to be down at Mako at the political convention. I've invited Larry Hogan. Um, you know, I, you talk about Democrats and Republicans. I started the tour with Rick Meehan in Ocean City and Barry Glassman. It has been a fascinating ongoing conversation about crabs, H2 visas, J1s, Baltimore people going to the Eastern shore, making crab cakes, where crabs come from, finding people in Southern Maryland who hate CNN, who have crab pots out and they <laughs> literally bring the rockfish in, flop it oh, on yeah. the plate and serve it to you. Like Absolutely. I have seen the full 
political spectrum on this. And I'm only 10 days. In. I mean, like I was going to say, you got a whole month to go. I had a couple of crab cakes that, you know, along the way that I was like, eh, you eh. know, I, 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 you know, and, and, and I, I think in Southern Maryland, they just make crab cakes different. And I think they serve them different. They serve them with tartar sauce. I don't like, I don't get it. I don't really get the guy. cocktail sauce thing so much, but it, it tartar sauce is what you put on fish sticks to me. Guy. Yeah, yeah, you put yeah. That on no, fish sticks. no, no. I'll, I'll do cocktail sauce if it's a bad crab cake. <laughs> well, that's the point. The point is to not eat a bad crab cake, right? Right. A good crab cake. You shouldn't eat anything but the crab cake. And maybe a oh, beer. My. Maybe a beer. Oh, well, sure. You got to have a drink. But, but you know, the crab cake is the crab cake. You don't need to... I mean, look, you go out for a great steak, you mess it up with some ketchup or God forbid you ask for the A1 at the crab house. The chef's going to come out and butcher you. No, no, you don't, no, no, you no. don't mess up a crab cake with bad sauce. No, that's not that's not the way to do it. All right. So I'm, I'm getting into this thing and I've talked a lot about the quality of the meat, freshness, paramount. Yep. I was down at yep. Jam Clayton in Cambridge watching them pull the crabs off, watching the Mexican gals, the, the H2B workers, like, do this yep. ninja Olympic thing that they do. I have video. You'll see it all. It's all coming. I had a long chat with um, Jack Brooks from there with Damie that's yep. airing right now, that's up at Baltimore Positive, where you can learn about – the industry. So that's the fresh part. Then there's the, what do you put in it? What, what's the filler? The filler to yeah. me is the flavor, right? So what, whatever you're mixing in dry mustard, wet mustard, mayonnaise, uh, parsley, secret spices, whatever those things are, J O old Bay, whatever you're doing with Progresso it. Progresso breadcrumbs. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, maybe it's crackers. Maybe it's bread. Right. It, every right. single one of these. And there's the technique of the temperature you cook it, where you cook it, the platter you cook it on. Every Broiler part fries. of this. Bro broil the fry. Almost everybody broils it, but there's a technique that's broiled and fried that I never knew that is a heat-based thing with a skillet that – I'm learning from chefs, right? But here's the right. key. There's two two parts to this that I'm going to give away, and you're the first one to learn the secret, Leonard. And I learned this in uh, Columbia on Tuesday night, the 10th, uh, at James Taylor. Before James Taylor, we went to a place called Leland's, L-E-E-L-Y-N-N, -L -E -E -L Leland's Restaurant. Yep. It's in Columbia. I highly recommended. It was the chunkiest, thickest, the lumpiest crab that I had had. I, I, so here's two things. When I'm eating it, I ordered the three and a half ounce and she offered me the seven ounce at like a nice discount, you know, it's 20 or 33. And I'm like, I've had a crab cake every day. I'm just going to get the small <laughs> one. So I order the small one. It comes in this beautiful salad and we're getting after it with walnuts and stuff, apple stuff. My wife likes beautiful, beautiful vinaigrette. I've had great dressings, like a honey lime vinaigrette. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so we're eating it and the crab cake's small to begin with. And my wife starts getting after it. My wife began this marriage not eating crab meat at all, mm. not liking crab meat. So now she's eating it. And when she comes back to eat more, that's a tell. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm trying to get some tells. When she comes back for more and when I'm pissed at her for eating it, and then I think to myself, I should have ordered more. And then here's yeah. the other part. Here's the part where you – this is where it marinates, Okay. When you go home and you're asleep in the middle of the night and you wake up and you're thinking, I can't wait to go back there, you know? There so you when go. you find the place you want to go back, and I've already found one or two or three of those, like legitimate, like, yeah. oh my God, you know, I, I can't wait to go back there. I got a place pretty excellent. that I might go back next week because it was so good. You Like, it was just so good. And excellent. So that's what you're looking for, right? I mean, do you see right. perfect – they're all I, I I've had five or six crab cakes. I'm eleven days in. I've had thirteen or fourteen crab cakes in eleven days. I'm about to go to Annapolis, doing Cecil County. I'm getting around and we're going west the whole deal. Yep. And yep. um I've had five or six that have been exemplary. It's completely different. Go. Completely different. Yeah, all of them were different. So you're asking what's the best one? Well, this one had more mustard. That one had more mayonnaise. I told Damie this after doing Southern Maryland come back. I'm like, there is nothing. Like a Fadley's crab cake. It, it, there's 
I haven't had anything like a Costas. There's been nothing to taste. It, and some of these have made me want right. a Costas because it's right. like, and it's so familiar to me, right? And, and Fadley's is so familiar to me, but none of these are like Fadley's. None of these are like Costas. None of these are going to be like your friends at Pappas. And I have never That's had right. a Conrad's crab cake. So I've, there's a, I've never had, I've had one Coco's crab cake in my life. So there's a lot of these places I've never been to. This has been a joy. I mean, it's really, so thank you for sponsoring it. Thank you for being a part Pleasure. of it. All it's good. really been a lot of fun so far. I'm looking forward to going eat a couple crab cakes with you. Did I make you hungry? <laughs> no, I'm ready. Your I'm place ready. is in Delaware at the beach, right? It is. We're in Bethany. All right, I'm going to give you one last story before I let you go. Batman and I were drinking late. Imagine that. Yeah. Fish tails, right? <laughs> we're yeah. Like we used to, right? So Batman and I, are, he's smoking like a Jimmy, and I'm like, blow that at, you know, like we, we fight. We're right, friends right. like that. So you got to go to Woody's. You got to go to, you got to go to Woody's. You got to go to Woody's. I'm like, Bat, Woody's is in Delaware. It's a Maryland tour. Ah, right. You got to go to Woody's. I'm like, well, maybe we, we, if Woody's wants me to have a crab cake, here's what. I'm going down for the political convention two weeks from now. If Woody's wants me to try their crab cake, they can bring it to the Ocean City Convention Center, to the Mako, okay? If they bring it to Ocean City, I'll consider it a Maryland crab cake. How about that? Is that fair? There you go. There you go. But I'm they not going it? to Delaware on this tour to do anything no, other than see Foreigner. No, no. <laughs> you at the Foreigner uh, show foreigner. this week? What's that? Oh, you're you're with your kid. Foreigner, the weekend of the 21st, is playing the Selbyville Freeman okay. Pavilion. You know what I'm talking about, yeah, right by your yeah, head. Yeah, Probably yeah, Probably hear yeah, the yeah. music from there, right? 21st, 21st. It's I next Saturday around. night. We're going. I might go, be go. around. Well, I'm I'm sneaking into Delaware. Don't tell anybody. But, well, it's a um, show. Foreigner, I haven't seen them in 100 years. That's Feels like the first time, time, baby. Cold as Amen. ice. Amen. Cold as ice, I know. Leonard, I am the original dirty white boy. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard, I appreciate you, man. We'll stay hot blooded here. Raskin Global is the way to find Leonard. And uh, of course, you can always find him at Baltimore Positive. Appreciate you, bro. I'll have a crab cake soon. All right. Absolutely. Back See off ya. the road, putting miles out there. A uh, big appreciation to Dennis and our friends at Coons for giving me that Bronco the first weekend. It was big. It was beautiful. I wasn't allowed to pick my nose. I had to drive between the lines. People were looking at me. Uh, that's just the way it rolls when you roll in a 22 Ford Bronco from uh, from our friends at, at Coons Ford Security Boulevard. To get all, see Dennis, uh, our friends at Royal Farms that put us on the road and gassed us up. Our friends at Wise have powered me with delicious coconut water. I've been picking up gold watermelon on the road. I've been picking up fruit. Thank you to all of our sponsors. We are WNSD AM 1570. The hashtag Tour. I'll make you hungry too. We're BaltimorePositive.com.